Congratulations to the Impact Network and its founders, Apostle Wayne T. and Dr. Beverly Y. Jackson, for now becoming the only African-American founded and operated international Christian TV network, bringing the gospel to Africa, including over 40 countries and 900 million viewers. We salute you. Today's millionaire tip, always pay yourself. Do you know how important that is? Do you know how many people actually from a percentage base don't pay themselves? What do I mean by that? You get paid. Some of you pay your tithe and offering, which is great. You need to do that. Some of you pay your bills, which is certainly great, but a lot of you don't even pay yourself. You have to pay yourself. Listen, every month that you are not paying yourself, you are losing compounded interest. Every time that you don't pay yourself, you're pushing money away from you. Now, the best thing that I recommend that you do is go ahead and set yourself up on an automatic withdrawal. That means that you know it's coming out. It's something about you treat it like a bill, that you know that money is coming out on the 5th. You're going to make sure that $50 or that $100 or that $200 or whatever it is that you can afford to pay yourself every single month. Why? Because every single month that you're paying yourself, at the end of the year, you want to be able to say, you know, if you make if you're making five fifty thousand dollars this year, you should at least have five thousand dollars, ten percent of your income that you can point to and say, this is where my money is went. Otherwise, you look up and you paid everybody else but yourself. This is the other thing that I want you to think about. Let's just say you have student loans or credit card debt. You're paying interest to them. Well, that, that's what pays their employees. That's what pays for new systems and IT because those uh, vendors understand that if we're going to expand our business, we have to pay ourselves and we have to also tack on interest for whatever service they're providing. So you have to do yourself the same way. Listen, I'm working hard. I'm taking care of the children, taking care of everything else. I got to make sure that I take care of myself so that at the end of every year, you can see that your financial portfolio has increased because you value yourself enough to pay yourself. You can afford to pay yourself and you cannot continue to not pay yourself. So that's it for today's Millionaire Tip. All right, now it's time for Financial Watch. Let's hear what's in the news today. More and more financial experts, advisors, economists, and celebrities are talking about owning gold. Four benefits of owning gold and silver. Number one, you protect your savings against the current devaluations. What do I mean is that the dollar is on a steady decline. It started declining in 1971 when President Nixon decided to sign a bill to say that our currency was no longer going to be backed by gold or silver. Number two, you protect your purchasing power as inflation is steadily rising. Why? Because as the value of the dollar goes down, prices go up, but as the value of the dollar goes down, the value of gold actually goes up. Number three, you can protect yourself against severe banking crisis if anything like that happens. And last but not least, you can protect yourself against the uncontrolled actions of the government. So that's it for today on Financial Watch. Congratulations to the Impact Network and its founders, Apostle Wayne T. and Dr. Beverly Y. Jackson, for now becoming the only African-American founded and operated international Christian TV network, bringing the gospel to Africa, including over 40 countries and 900 million viewers. We salute you. Impact is, Impact is social. Impact is fearless. 
unafraid to speak the truth in love, committed to their voice. For those who have no voice and ready to listen, prepared to stand up for what is right, no matter the consequence, working to correct injustice, whether political or social. The Impact Network. Uncovering your purpose and your destiny. Bringing spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, and financial empowerment so you're free to live your calling. The Impact Network. Welcome back to the Jewel Package right here on the Impact Network. And today, you are in for a treat. I am here with a powerful story with Dr. Leslie Brown. Hey girl, oh, no. good to have you on. You. Okay, so now I wanna jump right in here because you got a powerful story. You're a transformational strategist, mm -hmm. an accountability leadership coach, which I think we all need accountability. Uh, author, speaker, and entrepreneur. That is great. Your life, I've heard a little bit about your story, but I want us to talk about, go right into that, because I know you had some tragic tragic things happen to you. Mm -hmm. You lost a parent. That is correct. And then you also were a teen parent. Mm -hmm. And so some of those things people never, uh, you know, end up bouncing back from. Talk about what happened there with, your, with one of your parents and, and being a teen mom. Well, I became a teen mom at the age of 16. My father was tragically killed in a car accident, a drunk driver hit the vehicle that he and my mom was in and my mom became disabled 100 percent disabled from that car accident oh, wow. so she doesn't have any pelvic bone or bone in I believe it's her left leg if I'm not mistaken okay. and my father was killed because his chest hit the steering wheel which shut down all of his internal organs oh wow um, once again I was a 16 year old teen mom at the age of 16 but fortunately and through God's grace and mercy I completed high school at the age of 16 I oh, went wow. on to complete my undergraduate studies and then my master's degree and then off to my doctoral degree. Oh, wow, that is <laughs> awesome. Thank so you. So let's talk a little bit about how old were you when that happened? The car accident? Yes. I believe I was 10. You were 10? Yes. So were you just in the house still with your mom or? Actually, my mom had five children and my youngest brother was six months at the time. Oh, and so wow. both of my parents were in their early 30s when this occurred. Wow. So did you, where are you and your sibling? I am the second oldest, but my oldest sister, she is learning disabled. So technically it's like I am the oldest. And So did you take on that role? That is Correct. So mm -hmm. were you taking care of the six month old yes. child? Yes. Did your mom have any other adults in the house? Well, that when were the helping? accident happened, um, unfortunately, my mom had to stay in the hospital for several months. Okay. And because of that, my brothers, sisters, and myself, we were shuffled house to house to house because no one really wanted to take care of five children right. within one home. Okay. So therefore, you know, we were all shuffled to various aunts and uncles until my mom um, became a little bit better and she was able to come home. And and care for us for herself but when my mom was released from the hospital she she was uh, bedridden for several long months so oh, wow. it was as if I became the mom Wow and the sister Wow and eventually you know I went out and got a job as the years progressed because okay. we needed income to come into the house because we then we lived in a very rural area in Williamsburg County Wow so mm -hmm. those are obviously some very challenging years yes uh, that you went through that what do you think was the thing that sustained you because you were in a leadership role obviously that is in correct your family what do you think was the thing that kind of sustained you to kept you going or did you ever feel like I'm going I'm running away Way. I mean, what was your thought process during those I years? I think my thought process was I didn't have a choice. Someone needed to step up. And also, I come from a praying family. So okay. prayer was definitely okay. the foundation of our household. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's powerful. That's yes. good. You went on to achieve all those degrees. I mean, yes. you got your bachelor's, your <laughs> master's, your, your doctorate. I mean, that, that that's correct. huge. That is correct. I mean, coming from, I would assume, was, was it, were you guys impoverished at that yes. time? Mm -hmm. So things were pretty 
tough. Pretty tough. What gave you the mindset, or did your mom push you to say, "Hey, you got to go on to get your degrees"? Was that you? Where did that Where did that mindset come from? Well, actually, uh, Dr. Jewell, I uh, at the age of 16, I, I was a maid. I worked on Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, cleaning hotel rooms for a living, and I'll never forget the moment when I said to myself, "I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired mm. of cleaning hotel rooms, taking my little check, purchasing diapers and milk for my baby." Mm. Uh, my parents were then my mom then eventually remarried to my stepfather and they would uh, drive me back to school on the weekends and then it was the same thing over and over and over and I just wanted better for my life and mm. I did not want to become the typical 16 year old teen mom mm. that was on food stamps and Medicaid for the mm -hmm. rest of my life. Wow, 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 wow. So what universities did you go to? Well, I attended uh, South Carolina State University in Orangeburg, South Carolina, undergrad, wow. and then Leslie University out in Cambridge, Mass, and then Argosy University in Sarasota, Florida for my all doctoral All right, degree. girl, all right, <laughs> I'm proud of you. That is great. Okay, so let's jump into this. I want to talk a little bit about this because you're a transform, transformational strategist, and you mm -hmm. talk about creating a frustration-free zone. What does that mean, and how can we position ourselves to live a frustration free life. I think one of the most important things that people have to remember in order to remain uh, free of frustration is owning who you are. Because oftentimes people don't know who they are so they allow people to come into their lives and frustrate the matter and on top of that uh, creating an organized environment. Oftentimes I flow better when my uh, environment is very organized mm. and oftentimes I don't allow people to bring their nonsense and foolishness All into right. my environment because okay. when people have a tendency certain people have a tendency to bring foolishness and nonsense mm -hmm. and with that being said when you know who you are mm -hmm. you can flow effectively mm -hmm. but when you don't know who you are then you run the risk of allowing certain people to enter into your environment and invest mm -hmm. or, or, or infest your environment mm -hmm. and oftentimes that causes you to feel frustrated you mm -hmm. don't know who you are so you want to be a part of the clique mm -hmm. see people who know who they are mm -hmm. you don't worry about whether or not you are a part of a clique mm -hmm. because see, you're walking in God's authority Mm. So when you walk in God's authority, then you, I don't have, I don't care if I'm not a part of the A crowd. Mm. You know, if I'm a part mm. of the B or the C crowd, guess what? That's okay with me mm -hmm. because I'm going to work my God-given talent, and I'm walking in my calling, and I'm walking in my purpose. So you've learned to not allow if somebody doesn't like what you do or how you do it. That's correct. You're not allowing that to frustrate you. That's exactly. And let me tell you right. something. I love this subject because this is a subject that I talk to, you know, our spiritual children about at church and even our team with business is mm -hmm. listen it doesn't mean issues aren't going to come that's right but we don't have to be frustrated every day that's exactly right that's <laughs> with exactly what somebody right. does or doesn't do or how they do it you know you don't want everything to send your blood pressure mm -hmm. through the roof so we're going to come right back so i want to talk a little bit more about this because i think this is something that we probably all have dealt with or are dealing with living a frustration free zone i love that don't you <laughs> like that so stay tuned we'll be right back <laughs> One day, when the glory comes, it will be ours. Dr. King, what's your next move? A march from Selma to Montgomery. Selma is loud for every man, woman, and child. We will not wait any longer. background, color, culture, and thinking unified to provide solutions and spark innovation. Where thinking different makes you distinct and not an outsider. Where when a neighbor is weak, another comes in strength. The Impact Network for spirit, soul, and body. Impact Leslie Brown about living a frustration free life That's which right. I think is something we all need to probably reset and renew our minds to mm -hmm. every single day. Uh, I want to jump in here because I know that just what 15 months ago that is correct you had some tragic things happen to you mm -hmm. talk to me about what happened 15 months ago and what was that process what did that look like? Well I was uh, 
going through security at the Raleigh Durham Airport and all of a sudden I had this massive onset of a headache and I raised up my right hand, I touched my head, and all I can remember God saying, just make it through the security check, just make it through the security check. Um, I boarded my plane, arrived in Columbia, South Carolina, went to the hospital, but the doctors were like, oh, maybe it was because of stress, because you were out, you were working all day because of the heat, etc. So they gave me a shot, they gave me my medication, I went home, woke up the next morning, and I was on the phone talking to one of my colleagues, and as I was speaking to one of my colleagues, she stated to me, I don't understand a word you're saying, but in my mind, I thought I was speaking proper English. Mm. So I rushed myself to the hospital and the doctor told me that they had to rush me over to uh, the ER. And upon me arriving at the ER, they ran all kinds of tests, but they couldn't tell me anything that was wrong. I came back home and then the next thing I knew, I woke up the next morning, my speech was gone. My mm. right arm was locked in a crazy position, stiff position. And this and was I just out of the blue? Out of the blue. You had no prior Never, symptoms. ever, ever. I was a healthy 30-something year old single mom, working my business, uh, training, speaking, teaching online and on ground, minding my business. And then all of a sudden, one day, all of that was taken away from me. So you, you're in the hospital. Yes. You get up the mm -hmm. next day. You mm -hmm. can't speak English. Mm -mm. Your arm is not moving. No. Leg, I'm dragging my right leg. My right arm is in a stiff position and I could barely make sense of what I'm saying. And then people who knew me the day prior are coming in, family members, coworkers, etc. And they're saying, no, she just taught a class the other night. No, she was just speaking the other day. No, she just completed a training in Durham, North Carolina. And so you were like this for 15 months in and out, like five, six months, the first onset, then my speech barely came back, and then I had another onset, and then another onset. So I was back and forth, in and out of this onset for almost 15 months until Duke University, you know, stated, oh, this is what's going on with you. Okay, and were they able to treat it? Yes, they then placed me on medication. Mm -hmm. And the med medication worked? Yes. Yes, so I haven't had another onset. I just um, retained my speech again this past November prior. I think it was about a week or two prior to Thanksgiving. But we declare you will never have an onset <laughs> in the name of Jesus. In the name of you Jesus, and I touch and agree. All the days of your life, That's in right. Jesus' name. So, so praise God, so Duke University was able to kind of crack the code of what was That's going on right. with you. Because I had an onset there. Ah. Yes, they were running a series of tests, and they had me in this little wheelie chair thing, and as I was spinning and spinning and spinning, and I told the guy, I was like, you have to stop. I feel as if I'm about to lose my speech again. And the moment the chair stopped, I was like, I cannot speak. And so I couldn't speak again. And so they were able to diagnose me right then and there on the spot because God showed up and I guess allow that to happen at that so moment So that they could diagnose it and that it could be uncovered. Mm -hmm. But I just declare a long, strong, healthy life all the days of your Thank life. You so that much. all the cells and tissues are in alignment with the word of mm -hmm. God and that you are whole in Jesus' yes, name. In Jesus and name. no more setbacks That's in the right. name of Jesus. That's right. So you're, you're feeling better. You're, you're talking now. Yes. Were you, was your mindset when you were going through this, I mean, because it seems like that would be an opportunity for you to have all kinds, a gamut of emotions mm -hmm. going through that. Frustration was one of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay, well, yeah, I would imagine that. So, so what do you do, how do you, obviously you push yourself with the faith and the help of God, correct. got you back on track, mm -hmm. you're feeling better now. Yes. So what are you doing now to empower people, to help them to live a frustration-free life? What is your what is your system? If somebody wants to reach out to you, who is your ideal client? My ideal client that I mainly work with are novice leaders, uh, recent college graduates, people who are transitioning back into the workforce, uh, military folk who are transitioning back into the workforce, that mom who has sat home the last several years and they're trying to rebuild themselves, create this new professional and or personal brand to catapult themselves back to the uh, next level. So th that is my ideal client base that I work with. Wow, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit, uh, because certainly I know you've got a book Yes. Call the thorns within. Yes. 
What is that book about? Well, The Thorns Within talks about all of the thorns that have pricked me throughout life, being that teenage mom, uh, working various jobs uh, because I graduated college in my early 20s and by me uh, completing my undergraduate studies, oftentimes people don't take me seriously because I look young and because I am young. Mm -hmm. And uh, once I finished my uh, master's degree, I went through a series of events in my life that really shaped and molded me to become the leader that I am because mm -hmm. when you're a triple threat, I like to call it, I'm African American, mm -hmm. I'm a young woman, and then I'm young. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, people don't want to take me seriously. And so I wrote that book to let other women and let other young girls know, listen, even though you go through crazy situations in your life, if you're that teen mom, understand that I am that role model. Because oftentimes, mm -hmm. they don't have someone that they can look up to and say, can I make it out of my current right. situation? Right. Yes, you can through right. the faith of God. And if you push yourself and if you transform your mind, because first of all, none of no strategies, no textbook will work until you transform your mind right. and oftentimes people remain stagnant in life because they fail to, to transform their thinking and right. it all starts in the mind because the mind and the head works everything else so right. once you transform your mind and say to yourself I am somebody yeah. I can come out of this rut yeah. I will make it I will catapult myself to the next level I don't care who my mother is or who my father is yeah. what my environment looks like or what my circumstance may look yeah. like you yeah. know God before me who can be against me right. and God knows the plans that he has for your life so I speak positive affirmations to myself every day and yes. I speak positive affirmations into other people because oftentimes people just need for someone to speak life right into them yeah. and so oftentimes people hear words of death but mm -hmm. they don't hear words of life right yeah. and so um, I usually speak at a lot of public schools and okay. colleges universities churches okay. and so I go out and I speak and I motivate people through the speaking because all people want to do is look at someone yeah and to know, oh wow. They want to be affirmed. Yes. And, and and to be understood and to know that they're valuable. Exactly. You know what I mean? And once you feel like you're valuable, because so much of that uh, dictates your ability to be able to produce. That is and, correct. And really to soar and do well in life. Mm -hmm. well, Marquita, I thank you, girl. That is good stuff. So you need to get <laughs> the thorns within that book. That's good. I want to ask you, now we're going to play a game called <laughs> What Would You Do? Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Kimberly from Alabama has been cooking for others for 10 years mm. she's never attended culinary school but is a naturally talented cook she always cooks for holidays and loves preparing meals for her family she also has people that she that she prepares meals for regularly but she doesn't have any paying clients mm. if you were Kimberly how would you turn your passion into significant profits or would you just keep cooking as a hobby no First of all, advertisement, advertisement, advertisement. So if you're cooking for other people, you might as well advertise. Right. And one thing that I love to do, my family laugh at me all the time, but I always carry around my iPad and my phone and I take pictures everywhere I go. So if mm -hmm. you're gonna cook and if you're gonna set up people's tables, yeah. you might as well take your pictures, upload them on your Facebook page, yeah. not your personal Facebook page, but create a business mm, Facebook that's good. page. Yeah. Yes, so create that name, create that image and uh, snap your pictures. Mm -hmm. If you're going to set up tables, once again, if you're going to cook for other people, you might as well take those pictures, capture those moments, and also have those people to write you a testimony or create a small video segment mm. and have them to state how they enjoy Oh, I like that, meal. girl. Let them feedback. do a video. Testimony. Get the feedback. That's right. Put it on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. That's exactly Snapchat right. if mm -hmm. she's younger because a lot mm -hmm. of young people are on Snapchat. So I love that. That's good. I think also maybe she could even do, you know, maybe set up at the local library exactly. set up a tasting tasting you know say at six o'clock mm -hmm. come and taste my barbecue ribs by exactly. Kimberly and then make those ribs maybe available to exactly. buy right then and there or create like a free course that people can come and mm. participate in so yeah. free, those free courses are always great to garner that income because if people understand okay they're giving something away for free people mm -hmm. like the word FREE -E, yeah free. right <laughs> so if if you're offering that free course more people yeah. will come more people will participate and if what you're selling is good if what mm -hmm. you're cooking is good then yeah. they're gonna sign up for that class the next yeah. time and they're gonna pay you for that yeah. class just just make sure that the the environment is right. really good yeah conducive to what people oh, that's so good <laughs> all right Kimberly so you heard it right here so she needs to get all her social media together she that's needs to correct. take pictures mm -hmm. she needs to do a tasting that's correct uh, so people can try it maybe do a free tasting mm -hmm. I think and, and then I think it would be good to maybe set up a website 
or even take cards there or something that people can fill out if they like it hey you can go ahead and order your meals for five days exactly. a week exactly you know that's what I mean great. exactly yeah right. so that way she can start actually monetizing mm -hmm. immediately that's right because I think that whatever that passion is or the hobby mm -hmm. uh, that you would just do for free that more than likely is the God ordained business that's right that if you run with that it can end up making you millions, millions and millions of dollars, of dollars. You know, I think about uh, what's her name Betty Crocker mm -hmm. she started and uh, also Mrs. Fields cookies that's right you know they just started doing it because they love baking that's right you know but they took it to the next level and not only that dr. Jill I think something else that Kimberly needs to think about is her targeted population are you looking to target that working mom that right. doesn't have time to come home and cook those meals yeah absolutely you know so if you're yeah. gonna package those meals I know <clears throat> that mom who may have a couple of kids or even a, a, just one child and working yeah. all day getting right. off work at five to six o'clock they're tired of McDonald's they're tired of KFC absolutely. nothing wrong with those you yeah. know places but yeah. I want a home cooked meal Absolutely. so let me plug into right. XYZ catering. Exactly. It's so funny because I feel like are these home cook home prep meals are becoming more and more popular where they're delivering the meal That's right. to your home. I know we have a place called Veggie Chef in, in Murfreesboro and they deliver it right there and we can pick out our menu for the whole week. So mm -hmm. it really is a business. So thank you so much Marquita <laughs> for being on the show. I'm proud of you girl. You're doing great things. So get that book The Thorns Within. Alright now it's time for Reality Woo! All right. Let's talk about 16 and pregnant on MTV. Have you seen that? It's actually pretty good. I mean, you see these teen girls that are pressing to move past being a teen pregnant mom into success. And so this whole docu-series basically is them striving for success with the baby. And this is what I want to say about this because I think that you know, if you are going to be successful in life at all, you have got to learn to persevere. Right. You've got to learn to persevere past circumstances. You've got to learn to push past odds and obstacles. Listen, that's all a part of the journey. You know, I love what Dr. Brown was talking about. Listen, a lot of things that people get frustrated about, which is one area that I've tried to continue to work on myself, it's just life. So I don't have to get frustrated just because it's life. I don't have to get frustrated just because something didn't happen when I wanted it to happen, how I wanted it to happen, or even where I wanted it to happen. But understand there's always an opportunity for me to gain some wisdom out of it. So these girls that are 16, you know, to see them now, some of them are 20, 22, 23, and to see how they push past being a teen mom at 16, I think actually uh, is quite inspirational. And this is not one of the wretched ones. Of course, there's some wretched ones out there. This is not one of those, but I think that you know watching some of these shows you can actually gain some insight and you realize you know what I'm not by myself you know whatever I'm going through right now is uh, you know really it's just a part of the journey but let me leverage it That's to right. help me make me bolder let it make me stronger let it make me more confident but I don't have to allow something in my life that I was not necessarily anticipating cause me to throw away my dream as a matter of fact in whatever circumstance you're dealing with don't stop dreaming and don't stop moving and don't quit the last thing that you need to do is quit and listen if a pregnant mom can stop and not quit then you certainly I don't care what it is you're going through you don't need to quit you need to push past those circumstances because you will eventually achieve all your goals not just one goal but all your goals you'll end up winning at every area of your life so I want to thank you so much for tuning in to the Jewel Taker Show and remember you can have it all